G'day folks, welcome to a nice little Monday afternoon update. And a rather hot one too, because we've got wonderful weather now. It's going to be 30, it was 32 today, and it's going to be 32 or 34 tomorrow. Which is awesome, because summer's finally here and my American friends are now going to get snow dumped on them very soon. Oh well, what goes around comes around and goes around again. Gotta love weather cycles. So, uh, yes, we're heading into summer. It's still spring and it's getting warm, so it's a bit of a record at the moment. It's uh, pretty good. So, um, yeah, I've got to re-fan and clean this PC as things get hotter. Um, the 970 needs a good clean and an extra booster fan on it, because they particularly don't like being mounted vertical. It's fine in winter time, unless I'm playing like GTA 5 or something, which I haven't for ages. I just haven't had the real time or energy to really bother gaming. Um, but even now, just idling, it gets pretty hot. So I'm going to put another little Panaflow fan on it, or another, something quieter. And, um, yeah, give that thing some real boosted cooling. Or even, uh, it's brand, it's still fairly new, so I don't want to pick it apart and go water cooling. As soon as I start butchering it, it's um, warranty over. But then again, it probably, uh, you also got to keep the VRMs cool and everything like that, so I don't want to go hacking it too much and then have the VRMs overheat one day when I'm at work because this PC does sometimes run when I'm at work uh, just uploading videos it takes several hours to do a few gigs so I'll leave it running and even if the displays are turned off and everything it's still putting out video signal and it just gets warm so I don't know how the video card's going to go in summertime I'm just going to have to fan the hell out of it and uh, hope for the best anyway um, a few well, a few projects on the go, but again, this weekend's going to be a tidy up weekend. It's just been a bit nuts lately with uh, a good camping trip we did with Julian and another friend of his, Anthony. Uh, they're both YouTubers and friends of mine. Uh, we had a blast. It was a whole week up in the country, or sort of country. I mean, it's 20 minutes from Melbourne Airport, so it's not country country, but it's in the hills, like near King Lake where the fires were. It was um, getting out there. A few hundred acres of land to muck around on. Not that we went that far, because it's all hilly and uh, geeks like us aren't very good at running up and down hills. Well, running down is easy, it's the up part that kills us. So all this stuff I pulled out of Bluey Rav and uh, up until then was a mobile networking unit and uh, hasn't really got a home to go to. Actually, now it does. I have another car outside. Picked up for, um, it wasn't junk value, 1700's pretty sort of in between junk value and uh, a reasonable runabout. And uh, I was prepared to negotiate the hell out of it because I expected an engine that sounded like two skeletons rooting in a tin can, but for a 380,000k Honda engine, it just purrs. It's a nice engine. So uh, it needs a little TLC, like oil leaks and rubber mounts, that's about it. A few tyres and uh, window switch resolder. So um, I'll show you in a minute. There will be a full detailed video on it. But no, I want to get this bench tidied up and all this, so I want to get that back on the table because, as you can see, I've done a bit of work to the BSA. It does run. The carburetor really needs to come apart again and get, like, throttle bushes and stuff done. Clean the bowl again because it's picked up another bit of dirt through the jet. Make a muffler and attach all that. Uh, it'll be a non-stock muffler. It'll be one of the big Briggs, like, three-inch canister mufflers from Briggs & Stratton. Uh, looks very similar to the um, BSA muffler, but not the same. So that'll come up. That's running but not happy. Uh, it is a very old engine. Um, there's nothing in the crate, that's just one from work. I was going to throw it in the skip, but I figured why not keep it. Yeah, we had the Westinghouse out the other night. It's charging up the capacitor and pop. <laughs> it's rated for uh, 450, but I was only putting about 80 volts into it. 90 volts. <laughs> Got to fix that up too. <laughs> that's OHS and OHS approved. <laughs> this whole shop's OHS approved, isn't it? Oh, he's been playing with my AC compressor. Probably Julian. <laughs> that wasn't like that before. That's the guts out of a um, modern Ford car AC compressor. It's just a double acting um, swash plate compressor, piston type. Yeah, as you can see, I've been out so many weekends lately, uh, or exhausted so many weekends lately, I haven't done much. I've got to do a welding trolley get rid of that old arc welder which is very sick and not doesn't work properly and make a welding trolley that just fits in there nicely with a bottle on the back i'm going to get a sparky in to finish some of this stuff off and get rid of this panel 
that doesn't need to be there. That's only got a couple of lights and the big AC on it. If I get this one routed to a 60 amp feed and re-break it, that's all this shop needs. It doesn't need a monstrous panel. That one there just ended up there for the hell of it. It was available at the time. It was the first panel I had to put in here. And I wired it onto an extension cord, because why not? That's how the shop originally was when I got it. It had a little like mini house panel wired to an extension cord, which was all rotted and shorting out. So needless to say, I've been replacing it systematically. Warm weather means doomed ATM has to come out and get painted. Um, that's a must for this summer. I don't want it in here any longer. God knows how we're going to get it into the house. I'm guessing ramps. I mean, it's not as heavy as a photocopier. It just doesn't have neat little pull-out lifting hooks. So I'm either going to have to make lifting hooks or we'll just ramp it and just push it up into the landing. It's doable. Certainly weighs less than a copier, although, I don't know, it might be getting close. Yeah, anyway, as you can see, it's the usual mess. I know I keep carrying on about having to clean up, but trust me, it happens. It just never gets to the perfect clean utopia that uh, a well-organised business does. Um, yeah, and they've been pulling copiers apart and all kinds of stuff. Toys, toys, toys. Lathe runs well. Again, one of the next things is you know, get this area cleaned up, build the enclosure for this before I get Swarf or something in the drive and short it out, and uh, make a control panel for it. I think most of you will enjoy that, making a uh, remote control panel for this. Uh, the bigger ones at work, this actually snaps off, and you can connect it with a little flat, like six pin uh, ribbon cable. So you could actually pop that off and put it in an enclosure with a waterproof membrane on it and um, use it remotely, it'd be very easy. But in this case it's fixed, so I either put the box really close or, I don't know, I'd prefer something with an e-stop e and everything on it in any way. So I'll do that. I've got to buy a DC injection braking module for this. These drives don't take a resistor, like I thought. They take a specially made DC injection bus, which you can connect multiple drives to. You don't have to have one for each drive. If I have five drives, I can connect them all to an appropriately sized DC bus for reverse current injection braking, which is pretty cool. Delta make this stuff really modular and really easy to use. Their PLC commands in those drives are so easy to set up. Very easy. And they integrate with Delta PLCs perfectly, which is kind of the point. Um, yeah, so I've got some temp wiring going on at the moment. We've got the lights in and conduited and working. They're just temp wired at the moment. I've got to get that connected into the panel. Um, I might actually see about breaking it into a couple of separate circuits, separate switches, just because having all these on is pretty full on in summer, and turning them all off is almost a bit too dark. Well, there should be another set on somewhere. Oh, that's on the other panel. That's the one I want to get swapped over to this one. There's lights on the big panel and lights on that panel, which makes no sense. But yeah, they're all kind of half run in. There's conduit going everywhere. But yeah, big thanks to Julian for running that stuff in. Uh, we just got to get it certified and signed off, and it's all pretty good. Anyway, um, giant TV, another LCD to fix up. Uh, you've, you've seen a million videos of me recapping televisions. I haven't done a step-by-step -step on one, but there's already plenty of how-to videos on recapping TVs. This one just has the same uh, blinky LED problem as the bigger one that I've got. Exact same problem. 12 volt caps blown out. Very known issue for those Hisense branded uh, LCDs. And this behemoth is out of focus and be, uh, the, the um, what do you call it? The um, convergence is going. Uh, the owner told me it worked but then it did fall over in the trailer as he was bringing it here so either it's been manually beaten around and out of alignment or the convergence is failing but the picture's a mess. So this thing is going to get pulled apart and we're going to turn it into like a light gun kind of thing. Multi-beam uh, Particularly when it gets foggy around here, you shoot some coloured beams of light out into the fog. <laughs> so that's coming apart. And here's my new toy. All covered in bloody bird poop. And as you can see, the bottle brush is in full flower. And the lorikeets love bottle brush. They also happen to love squirting shit all below where they're, wherever they're eating. So I've got to move this car once I'm done fixing that tyre. Because I forgot to put a jack under it, now it's completely flat and the spare's no good. But it is a very tidy car for 380, 380k. It's done some touring, um, evidence of that in the back. There's a bit of sand and salt rust and all that sort of stuff. 
yeah, a spare went kablooey when uh, RACV put it on for the uh, owner's wife after she got a flat. Uh, I think it was like 10 or 20 minutes later this one went pop because it's completely rotted out. Um, I can't fault RACV for it because it's really the owner's responsibility to keep a car in fine shape but to be honest I don't think I'd be keen doing that if I was a technician. You can actually see the steel exposed which is probably why it failed where it had been exposed to the weather. The water's gotten in and rotted the steel belts out. But yeah it's mostly here, just needs to tidy up. I think this will become a storage unit for the time being. Anyway, yeah, I've got to fix that tyre. It's just got a big, uh, big ass nail in it there which started leaking worse after I got it back here but it was always a problem. So that's getting done tonight. Apart from that, it just needs engine mounts, oil leaks fixed and the front windows struggle or if, you, if your ignition's on and the engine isn't running they don't do anything. Um, the driver's one sort of doesn't always want to respond and this one here is very sluggish until the um, engine's running so it just tells me there's a point of high resistance probably in the switch gang on the console that's the um, same sort of problem I had on my EB Ford uh, after I resold it they worked fine before then it was just in lazy mode trying to get that window up but overall pretty straight car just needs a bit of love drives like new nice snappy clutch um, accelerator is a bit sticky and stiff so I'm going to clean and lube the whole lot, clean the throttle body up. The uh, idle air control is a bit slow to respond as well but it's just carbon and muck. So uh, yeah, she'll become happy again. Need a plastic restorer and a bit of a bit cut and polish and look like new again. But yeah, I've got cars everywhere now. So Betty's going, clean up, roadworthy and sale. Um, I want like minimum two and a half with a roadworthy. I know I won't make much money back on it from what I spent, but you can only do so much with a car this age. I don't have a receipt for the clutch that I got done. He never gave me an official write-up on it. So um, I've got a, I can tell the customer there's a new clutch in there, but your word's only as good as it goes. Yeah, I found the spare wheel cover in the back and that seems to have come back into shape. It was crushed flat under the picnic table. But I used the supplied inner tube to uh, reshape it and just leave it in the sun. So that's good. Yeah. And yes, these do come with a picnic table. I've never seen another SUV do that. And I think that'll make a nice range table, shooting table. So, yeah. And that's not mine. That's Julian's little pet. Because he's still on break. He came down here and we all drove up to the country and uh, they stayed up there for another week. So that's good, I've got his little toy. I've got to run that every now and then to keep the battery happy. But yeah, good car. Um, also needs the rear tyres, they're a bit down on tread. Oops. Oh, you'll see a full detailed video on this one, but it's barely a key stick this between the wear bars and the tops, so I'll do them. It's got the usual wear and tear, nothing chronic. It's not exactly a cold, cold start, but <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I mean, he'd already driven it to get fuel um, when I showed up, so I never actually saw a cold start. But just with the way this thing was running when the oil was hot and thinned out, it wasn't going to be noisy. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with this, even the AC works, which is wonderful. I've still got to re um, redo the little O-rings on the mani compressor manifold in Bluey. Yeah, that one doesn't want to do anything now. And that one's only just working. If you just leave the accessory on, this barely does anything, so I think this front window bank has a bad solder joint. I've just got to pop that out and uh, re-solder re it and uh, hopefully this will work again. He has been messing around in there and didn't plug the uh, hatch release switch back in, but I've got to get in there and redo that. Yeah, it comes with the obligatory uh, cassette adapter and a, I think it's a 10 disc CD changer under the seat, which is kind of nice. So many joke opportunities here about celebrity. Half decent sound. 
all servo controlled uh, HVAC controls. Oh, you've got to make sure this turns off because uh, you can turn it on and you can also take the key out. I would like to fix that but I think it might need, mean a new barrel. So you make sure it snaps to zero then take the key out because uh, it comes out in any position even when running. I don't think that's a roadworthy item though. Yeah, a little bit oily. Front tyres are great. Just the back ones are gone. And again the rubber bushings are pretty good. Top upper ball joints boots are a little bit perished and I think they picked that for roadworthy so I can separate them and uh, yeah I'll put a new boot on that. It's just it hasn't broken open and let dirt in but it's just almost on the verge of it so it's time to do that. And I'd like another little centre cap for that wheel. There's only uh, three. Oh that's good. Giant TV has to go. That is in the way. Anyway Thanks for watching, that's an extended ramble. I mean, you're probably gonna hear much of the same story when I'm going over the car, but I was in exploration mode at that time, so. That video will be up along with whatever I can cut and paste out of my um, shenanigans videos when I'm up in the bush. There isn't a huge amount, I mean, for it, considering you spent a whole week there, there's probably only about half an hour worth of video, but I'll cut and paste what I can and uh, hopefully it'll be worth the time. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, Stay tuned for more. Ooh, you belong in the fridge, my happy little uh, energy cell.